R2R decks get quite a lot of praise from a lot of people in the audio community, but they've historically been rather expensive. And that's got a lot to do with the fact that in practice, making an R2R deck which is really accurate is really hard. You'd struggle to find an R2R deck in many cases that goes beyond 16-bit real-world resolution, if that. But one company has stood out as making exceptionally accurate R2R decks, and that is Hollow Audio. But now, Topping and Hollow have released a collaborative product, the Centaurus, which uses the same DAC module as Hollow's entry-level DAC, the Cyan 2, with Topping doing the rest of the internals and adding some extra features like inbuilt oversampling, EQ, and a very nice visualizer display. But is this actually a Cyan 2 for less money with more stuff, or is there a catch? Well, unfortunately... Yes, there is. I'm Golden Sound, you're watching The Headphone Show by Headphones.com, and if you like content like this and want to see more of it, help support us by considering Headphones.com for your next audio purchase. And buy with confidence thanks to Headphones.com's 365-day return policy. I was quite excited when I heard about the Centaurus being released because for a while now, I've been quite a fan of the Hollow Audio products. Their flagship DAC, the May, has been the main DAC in my speaker system for a number of years now, and the Cyan 2 has been exceptionally impressive for its price point. But it did have a few lacking features like inbuilt oversampling. It was a NOS only DAC. So when the Centaurus was announced, it seemed like it might not only be a way to get a Hollow R2R DAC for less money, a more accessible price point, but with internal oversampling and EQ as well, that sounded fantastic. Unfortunately, when I got this in, I quickly ran into several pretty big issues. But before we talk about performance, let's have a look at the build. The Centaurus has a matte black or silver aluminium chassis, which feels extremely nice. The display on the front is crisp, clear, and as well as providing fairly easy menu navigation, can also function as either a VU meter or an FFT visualizer, similar to something like an RME ADI-2. You have just about all the I.O. you could possibly want, including USB, I2S, AES, SPDIF inputs, as well as Bluetooth, single-ended and balanced outputs, which can also be switched between in the menu, and 12 volt trigger in and out, which is always a nice additional feature to see. And speaking of additional features that are nice to see, EQ. You can use the Topping Tune app to configure, and then later you can select between the various different EQ profiles you've set up. It's all done on the device, so whilst you do need to use the software to configure the profiles, you can't do it on the screen itself. Once you've got them configured, you can use this wherever you like, or plug it into whatever you like, and then just select between the profiles on the device. I'm really glad to see that EQ is coming to more and more products. Quite frankly, it should be in just about everything. But the inside is where things start to get a little interesting. On the left, we can see a fairly large switching power supply, some filtering and regulation adjacent to it, an XMOS chip for USB, a Bluetooth receiver so you can use this wirelessly, and the main difference between this and other topping products, a fairly sizable R2R module, which is in fact the same one used in Hollow's own Cyan 2. What surprised me though was that when I took the R2R module off, underneath it was another DAC, a Cirrus DAC chip to be precise. And I wasn't exactly sure what this was doing here, this is an R2R DAC, so why is there a second Delta Sigma DAC chip inside? So I reached out to Topping and they've told me that this is not actually being used for any kind of analog output, it's not actually functioning as a DAC that you're listening to, instead it's helping to facilitate the FFT visualizer on the main display. I can't give the full details of what they've said, they've asked me not to share it, but all I can tell you is that the explanation makes complete sense, it's not doing anything nefarious. The output stage can be seen on this daughter board, and they're a fair bit smaller than what we see in the Cyan 2, but overall this DAC does look pretty nicely built, and the question I had then was, how is it in comparison to the Cyan 2? Well, for the measurements, what I wanted to do was get some measurements of both the Centaurus and the Cyan 2, but without unit variation in the R2R ladder as a factor at all. So, instead of just measuring both as they are, I measured the Centaurus, and then I transplanted the actual DAC module itself from this into the Cyan 2, so that the R2R module is identical, and we're just looking at the differences between the Centaurus as a product and the Cyan 2 as a product. Out of the box, the Centaurus is set to best OS mode, and that will be important in a moment. With the DAC set to 5 volts output, it gets a little below minus 100 dB total harmonic distortion and noise, but if you then change it to 4 volts output, which is also the stock setting, that improves to around minus 110 dB, which for an R2R DAC is excellent. The Cyan 2 for comparison just comes with a 5 volts output, and it gets about 1 dB better performance than the Centaurus does, 
at four volts. But if you use DSP volume control to reduce the level on the Cyan 2 down to a matching four volts, it's still about 110 dB. So it does seem that the Cyan 2 ever so slightly edges out the Centaurus in raw performance in a head-to-head -head comparison, but it's extremely minor. However, things really start to show major differences in performance when you disable the best OS mode on the Centaurus, since this is an R2R DAC, and that means you have the unique ability to run it NOS, or non-oversampling. R2R DACs, unlike Delta Sigma DACs, can convert PCM samples natively with no DSP needed whatsoever. For 48kHz content running in NOS, the Cyan 2 and Centaurus seem to behave very, very similarly. They're splitting hairs in terms of the difference. But once you start playing 44.1kHz music, which is the vast majority of music content, the Centaurus really starts falling apart. And a bunch of other issues start showing up as well. When you run the Centaurus in NOS, it seems like the two channels aren't actually perfectly in phase with each other, so playing a high frequency tone, you can see that the two don't overlap, they are slightly out of sync with each other. And jitter performance is what I can best describe as weird. So non-oversampling mode on the Centaurus is unfortunately basically broken. It just does not work properly if you are feeding it 44.1 kHz content, which is the vast majority of music. It only works if you feed it 48 kHz content, and the same DAC module transplanted into the Cyan 2 does not have these issues. And in fact, another reason why a lot of people will look to buy NOS R2R DAC specifically is because then, rather than just relying on the basic internal oversampling of a DAC, you can take full advantage of external high-performance oversampling from something like Acord Mscaler or software like PGGB and HQ Player. But you can't really do that on the Centaurus, since if you start feeding this high sample rate content, it again starts falling apart in performance, and I got various issues even at 192 kilohertz with noise, dropouts, and higher distortion, and it just did not seem to work properly. So then I tried using the internal oversampling in the Centaurus, which you can configure to run at 2x oversampling, 4x, 8x, or 16x, all the way up to 768 kHz. And if you pick more than 4x oversampling, it again starts just behaving terribly. You get massively higher jitter and distortion, leading to an over 20 dB drop in THD plus N performance alone. In comparison, the Cyan 2, regardless of whether I was using the module that came with it or swapping this one in to see if it was an issue with the module itself, performs absolutely fine regardless of what sample rate all the way up to 1.5 megahertz I was feeding it. I was only able to keep the Centaurus behaving normally in best OS mode. You can't use NOS because then any 44.1 kilohertz content is basically broken. You can't feed it high sample rate content because it barely even manages to retain a lock and has way higher added noise and distortion. And if you use the higher internal oversampling rates built into the product, then again, you get massively higher jitter. And whilst it's not as obvious as the other issues, it's still demonstrably quite a bit lower in performance. I did want to make sure that it wasn't just this particular unit being faulty, so I did test a second unit of the Centaurus, and unfortunately it had exactly the same behaviours. So I reached out to Topping, since it seems this is a product-wide issue, and I said, hey, here are the measurements, are you guys aware of these issues, do you know if there's anything that could be done to fix them? And they responded saying that it's expected for 44.1 kHz content to perform slightly worse than 48 kHz content. They weren't able to replicate the phase issue, which by the way only shows up when you're using NOS, it doesn't show up if you've got it in best OS mode, and then they just referred me to ASR's measurement of the product. So I don't know if I would consider a 20 dB drop in performance to be a slight degradation in performance, and especially when again the same DAC module transplanted into the Cyan 2 does not have the same problems. So it's not a problem with the DAC module, it is something about how the Centaurus is handling its clocking or DSP or interaction with the DAC. I was really hoping that this would be a Cyan 2 at a more accessible price, but with all these issues it unfortunately seems it is not. When you have the DAC set to best mode though, and it is working mostly fine, how does it sound? Well, very similar to the Cyan 2, as you might expect. This has a slightly warmer sound signature, especially compared to most of Topping's other DACs, though still very close to neutral, and it doesn't have what I'd call an outright coloured sound signature like something like the Lay Harmony does. It's still pretty close to neutral. It just has a slight hint of sweetness in the treble in particular, compared to most typical ESS or AKM-based DACs from Topping or otherwise, whilst likely thanks to the pretty excellent objective performance of this DAC, still being fantastically detailed. Staging on the Centaurus is pretty fantastic, Fantastic. And whilst not at the same level, it's starting to give you some of the flavour I get from the Hollow May in terms of how tactile it positions things within the soundstage, not just how big and airy it sounds. 
and I much preferred the way that timbre of both vocals and instruments, pretty much no matter what I was listening to, came across as notably more realistic, more convincing on the Centaurus than any of the other topping DACs that I've heard thus far. It was a little bit tough to get a direct head-to-head -head comparison between this and the Cyan 2, since if I keep this and the Cyan 2 in NOS and feed this 44.1 kHz content, which is most of my music, this starts falling apart, so we can't do that. I can't use the OS on this, because then this and the Cyan 2, which is NOS only, will have different frequency responses, so what I did was I compared best OS on this versus rune up sampling to 96 kHz into the Cyan 2, or keeping both in NOS and only feeding them 48 kHz content. In both cases, the sound and overall performance was extremely similar. They are far more similar to each other than they are to any other DAC that I can think of. You are really splitting hairs here. The Cyan 2 on certain specific tracks seemed to have a slightly airier presentation. It sounded slightly bigger. Maybe it's because it's got slightly better jitter performance. I'm not entirely sure. But again, it's splitting hairs, and that was only really evident on tracks that kind of cater to that, that have a lot of delicate, airy environmental cues going on. For the typical pop song, a lot of electronic music, Music, a lot of rock music. It was basically inaudible, and it was really hard to tell a difference between the two. The one aspect that was perhaps slightly more consistent was that the Cyan 2 did seem to have slightly better separation, or black ground if you want to call it that, uh, for busier tracks. Pain by the War on Drugs is a song that I go back to a lot for this kind of testing, and it was just slightly easier to focus and pick out on one particular instrument than it was on the Centaurus, but again, I want to make clear, it's really splitting hairs. The thing is, the Cyan 2 is 20% more expensive, and so in normal circumstances, I'd be inclined to say, well, there's a couple small instances where it was slightly better, so maybe the 20% is worth it, but honestly, probably not. But the key issue is that the Cyan 2 just sort of works and the Centaurus doesn't. When I was wanting to use this in NOS and playing 44.1 kHz content, or if I just wanted to use the internal oversampling on this product at anything other than 2x rates, it just didn't sound anywhere near as good. It had a sort of graininess or a smearing effect depending on the situation, and there are various significant measurable issues which explain why it likely doesn't sound right. This could have been a Cyan 2 for less money and with more features, but in its current state, I just don't feel that this is a finished product. I was excited about the Centaurus, but unless these issues can be fixed via a firmware update from Topping, I can't really recommend that you go and buy one. It only functions properly in specific configurations, and for 20% more, you can get a Cyan 2, which not only doesn't lose you any performance, in fact, in some ways it performs better, but the main thing is, the Cyan 2 just works, and the Centaurus doesn't. So for now, the Topping Centaurus is unfortunately a miss for me. I hope you enjoyed that video, and if you've got any questions that you wanted to ask about the Centaurus, the Cyan 2, any other DAX, music, measurements, or gear, then head over to the Headphones.com forum, which recently had a nice revamp, you should go and check it out, or come and say hi on the Headphones.com Discord server. Until next time, thanks for watching.